chapters 10 through 13 of First Chronicles, American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson. Chapter 10. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines, and fell down slain in Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines followed hard after Saul and after his sons, and the Philistines slew Jonathan and Abinadab and Malkishua, the sons of Saul. And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers overtook him, and he was distressed by reason of the archers. Then said Saul unto his armor-bearer, Draw thy sword, and thrust me through therewith, lest these uncircumcised come and abuse me. But his armor-bearer would not, for he was sore afraid. Therefore Saul took his sword, and fell upon it. And when his armor-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he likewise fell upon his sword, and died. So Saul died, and his three sons, and all his house died together. And when all the men of Israel that were in the valley saw that they fled, and that Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook their cities and fled, and the Philistines came and dwelt in them. And it came to pass on the morrow, when the Philistines came to strip the slain, that they found Saul and his sons fallen in Mount Gilboa. And they stripped him, and took his head and his armor, and sent into the land of the Philistines round about, to carry the tidings unto their idols, and to the people. And they put his armor in the house of their gods, and fastened his head in the house of Dagon. And when all Jabesh-Gilead heard all that the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men arose, and took away the body of Saul, and the bodies of his sons, and brought them to Jabesh, and buried their bones under the oak in Jabesh, and fasted seven days. So Saul died for his trespass which he committed against Jehovah, because of the word of Jehovah which he kept not, and also for that he asked counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire thereby, and inquired not of Jehovah. Therefore he slew him, and turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. End of chapter 10 Chapter 11 Then all Israel gathered themselves to David unto Hebron, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. In times past, even when Saul was king, it was thou that leddest out and broughtest in Israel. And Jehovah thy God said unto thee, Thou shalt be shepherd of my people Israel, and thou shalt be prince over my people Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron, and David made a covenant with them in Hebron before Jehovah, and they anointed David king over Israel, according to the word of Jehovah by Samuel. And David and all Israel went to Jerusalem, the same is Jebus. And the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, were there. And the inhabitants of Jebus said to David, Thou shalt not come in hither. Nevertheless David took the stronghold of Zion, the same is the city of David. And David said, Whosoever smiteth the Jebusites first shall be chief and captain. And Joab the son of Zeruiah went up first, and was made chief. And David dwelt in the stronghold, therefore they called it the city of David. And he built the city round about, from the millow, even round about. And Joab repaired the rest of the city. And David waxed greater and greater, for Jehovah of hosts was with him. Now these are the chief of the mighty men whom David had, who showed themselves strong with him in his kingdom, together with all Israel, to make him king according to the word of Jehovah concerning Israel. And this is the number of the mighty men whom David had, Jashobim, the son of Ahachmanite, the chief of the thirty. He lifted up his spear against three hundred, and slew them at one time. And after him was Eleazar the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, who was one of the three mighty men. He was with David at Pasdam Mim, and there the Philistines were gathered together to battle, where was a plot of ground full of barley, and the people fled from before the Philistines. And they stood in the midst of the plot, and defended it, and slew the Philistines, and Jehovah saved them by a great victory. And three of the thirty chief men went down to the rock to David, into the cave of Adullam, and the host of the Philistines were encamped in the valley of Rephaim. And David was then in the stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, 
Oh, that one would give me water to drink of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three brake through the host of the Philistines, and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem, that was by the gate, and took it, and brought it to David. But David would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto Jehovah, and said, My God forbid it me, that I should do this. Shall I drink the blood of these men, that have put their lives in jeopardy? For with the jeopardy of their lives they brought it. Therefore he would not drink it. These things did the three mighty men. And Abishai the brother of Joab, he was chief of the three, for he lifted up his spear against three hundred and slew them, and had a name among the three. Of the three he was more honorable than the two, and was made their captain, howbeit he attained not to the first three. Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabzeel, who had done mighty deeds, he slew the two sons of Ariel of Moab, he went down also, and slew a lion in the midst of a pit, in time of snow. And he slew an Egyptian, a man of great stature, five cubits high. And in the Egyptian's hand was a spear, like a weaver's beam. And he went down to him with a staff, and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand, and slew him with his own spear. These things did Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and had a name among the three mighty men, Behold, he was more honorable than the thirty, but he attained not to the first three, and David set him over his guard. Also the mighty men of the armies, Asahel the brother of Joab, Elhanan the son of Dodo of Bethlehem, Shammoth the Hororite, Helez the Pelonite, Ira the son of Ikesh the Tekoite, Abiezer the Anathothite, Sibachai the Hushathite, Eli the Ahohite, Maharai, the Nidophathite, Heled, the son of Bana, the Nitophathite, Ithai, the son of Ribai of Gibeah, of the children of Benjamin, Beniah, the Pirathonite, Hurai, of the brooks of Gaash, Abiel, the Arbathite, Osmaveth, the Bahurumite, Eliaba, the Shaelbonite, the sons of Hashem, the Gizanite, Jonathan, the son of Shagi, the Hararite, Ahiam, the son of Sakar, the Hararite, Eliphal, the son of Ur, Hefer, the Mekerathite, Ahijah, the Pelonite, Hezro, the Carmelite, Naari, the son of Ezbi, Joel, the brother of Nathan, Mibar, the son of Hagri, Zelek, the Ammonite, Naharai, the Berothite, the armor-bearer of Joab, the son of Zariah, Ira, the Ithrite, Gareb, the Ithrite, Uriah, the Hittite, Zabad, the son of Ali, Adonah, the son of Sheza, the Reubenite, a chief of the Reubenites, and thirty with him, Hanan, the son of Makkah, and Joshaphat, the Mithnite, Uzziah, the Ashturathite, Shema, and Jael, the sons of Hotham, the Aroerite, Jediael, the son of Shimri, and Joha, his brother, the Tizite, Eliel the Mahavite, and Jeribai, and Josh Aviah, the sons of Elnam, and Ithma the Moabite, Eliel and Obed, and Jaasiel the Mizobaite. End of chapter 11. Chapter 12. Now these are they that came to David, to Ziklag, while he yet kept himself close because of Saul the son of Kish, and they were among the mighty men his helpers in war. They were armed with bows, and could use both the right hand and the left in slinging stones and in shooting arrows from the bow. They were of Saul's brethren of Benjamin. The chief was Ahiezer, then Joash, the sons of Shema, the Gibeathite, and Jeziel, and Pelet, the sons of Osmaveth, and Barakah, and Jehu, the Anathathite, and Ishmaiah, the Gibeonite, a mighty man among the thirty and over the thirty, and Jeremiah, and Jehaziel, and Johanan, and Jozebad, the Gederathite, Eluzai, and Jerimoth, and Baaliah, and Shemariah, and Shephatiah, the Harufite, Elkanah, and Ishiah, and Azarel, and Joezer, and Jashobim, the Korahites, and Joelah, and Zebadiah, 
the sons of Jeroham of Gedor. And of the Gadites there separated themselves unto David to the stronghold in the wilderness, mighty men of valor, men trained for war that could handle shield and spear, whose faces were like the faces of lions, and they were as swift as the rose upon the mountains. Ezer the chief, Obadiah the second, Eliab the third, Mishmana the fourth, Jeremiah the fifth, Atai the sixth, Eliel the seventh, Johanan the eighth, Elzabad the ninth, Jeremiah the tenth, Machbani the eleventh. These of the sons of Gad were captains of the host. He that was least was equal to a hundred, and the greatest to a thousand. These are they that went over the Jordan in the first month, when it had overflowed all its banks, and they put to flight all them of the valleys, both toward the east and toward the west. And there came of the children of Benjamin and Judah to the stronghold unto David. And David went out to meet them, and answered and said unto them, If ye be come peaceably unto me to help me, my heart shall be knit unto you. But if ye be come to betray me to mine adversaries, seeing there is no wrong in my hands, the God of our fathers look thereon and rebuke it. Then the spirit came upon Amasai, who was chief of the thirty, and he said, Thine are we, David, and on thy side, thou son of Jesse. Peace, peace be unto thee, and peace be to thy helpers, for thy God helpeth thee. Then David received them, and made them captains of the band. Of Manasseh also there fell away some to David, when he came with the Philistines against Saul to battle. But they helped them not, for the lords of the Philistines upon advisement sent him away, saying, He will fall away to his master Saul, to the jeopardy of our heads. As he went to Ziklag, there fell to him of Manasseh, Adna, and Jozebad, and Jediael, and Michael, and Jozebad, and Elihu, and Zilathai, captains of thousands that were of Manasseh. And they helped David against the band of rovers, for they were all mighty men of valor, and were captains in the host. For from day to day men came to David to help him, until there was a great host, like the host of God. And these are the numbers of the heads of them that were armed for war, who came to David to Hebron, to turn the kingdom of Saul to him, according to the word of Jehovah. The children of Judah that bear shield and spear were six thousand and eight hundred, armed for war. Of the children of Simeon, mighty men of valor for the war, seven thousand and one hundred. Of the children of Levi, four thousand and six hundred. And Jehoiada was the leader of the house of Aaron, and with him were three thousand and seven hundred. And Zadok, a young man, mighty of valor, and of his father's house, twenty and two captains. And of the children of Benjamin, the brethren of Saul, three thousand, for hitherto the greatest part of them had kept their allegiance to the house of Saul. And of the children of Ephraim, twenty thousand and eight hundred, mighty men of valor, famous men in their father's houses. And of the half-tribe of Manasseh, eighteen thousand, who were mentioned by name, to come and make David king. And of the children of Issachar, men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were two hundred, and all their brethren were at their commandment. Of Zebulun, such as were able to go out in the host that could set the battle in array, with all manner of instruments of war, fifty thousand, and that could order the battle array, and were not of double heart. And of Naphtali, a thousand captains, and with them with shield and spear, thirty and seven thousand, and of the Danites that could set the battle in array, twenty and eight thousand and six hundred. And of Asher, such as were able to go out in the host that could set the battle in array, forty thousand. And on the other side of the Jordan, of the Reubenites and the Gadites, and of the half-tribe of Manasseh, with all manner of instruments of war for the battle, a hundred and twenty thousand. All these being men of war that could order the battle array, came with a perfect heart to Hebron, to make David king over all Israel. And all the rest also of Israel were of one heart to make David king. And they were there with David three days, eating and drinking, for their brethren had made preparation for them. Moreover, they that were nigh unto them, even as far as Issachar and Zebulun and Naphtali, brought bread on asses, and on camels, and on mules, and on oxen, victuals of meal, cakes of figs, and clusters of raisins, 
and wine, and oil, and oxen, and sheep in abundance, for there was joy in Israel. End of chapter 12. Chapter 13. And David consulted with the captains of thousands and of hundreds, even with every leader. And David said unto all the assembly of Israel, If it seem good unto you, and if it be of Jehovah our God, let us send abroad everywhere unto our brethren that are left in all the land of Israel, with whom the priests and Levites are in their cities that have suburbs, that they may gather themselves unto us, and let us bring again the ark of our God to us, for we sought not unto it in the days of Saul. And all the assembly said that they would do so, for the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. So David assembled all Israel together, from the Shehor, the brook of Egypt, even unto the entrance of Hamath, to bring the ark of God from kirith Jerim. And David went up, and all Israel, to Bala, that is, to kirith Jerim, which belonged to Judah, to bring up from thence the ark of God Jehovah, that sitteth above the cherubim, that is called by the name. And they carried the ark of God upon a new cart, and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, and Uzzah and Ahio drove the cart. And David and all Israel played before God with all their might, even with songs and with harps, and with psalteries, and with timbrels, and with cymbals, and with trumpets. And when they came unto the threshing floor of Chidon, Uzzah put forth his hand to hold the ark, for the oxen stumbled. And the anger of Jehovah was kindled against Uzzah, and he smote him, because he put forth his hand to the ark, and there he died before God. And David was displeased, because Jehovah had broken forth upon Uzzah, and he called that place Perez Uzzah unto this day. And David was afraid of God that day, saying, How shall I bring the ark of God home to me? So David removed not the ark unto him into the city of David, but carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. And the ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house three months. And Jehovah blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that he had. End of chapter 13